state machine is really just another activity to provide control flow. It's composable with other activities. And there are very few activities, especially that you see in the toolbox when it comes to designing the state machine. You have the state machine itself, you have a state, and you have a final state. A state machine is the main container. It's going to have a property pointing to the initial state, and that really is just mechanical, just tells it where to start when we execute it. We also have the notion of a final state. Again, this is mechanical. It lets the state machine activity know that once we enter that state, it's time for the state machine itself to be complete. So you'll see on the toolbox, you can drag a state machine on, you can add states to it, and you even have a special final state activity, which really is just an activity who's gonna have its property of his final set to true. Now each of these states have, as good state machines would you would expect, an entry and exit action. This is a spot for you to put activities to execute when you enter or exit the state. The final state, however, only has an entry action. This makes sense because we don't ever exit that state. We end the state machine. And we also have these transitions to define moving from one state to another or even moving from one state to itself. These transitions are made up of a trigger, a condition and action, and they point to some target state. The trigger can be any activity. So in previous versions, the, the original state machines in Workflow 3, you had this notion that it was an event-driven activity and you had to have special activities in there that, that knew about events. So delays and WCF receives or other activities that had this special interface. In Workflow 4, the trigger can be any activity. It could be a right line, it could be an assign, it could be an empty sequence. The idea is that whatever that activity is, when it closes, when it's done, that's the signal that this transition should start. Now in this simple scenario of a transition, you have this optional condition that you can apply. And the condition is simply an expression that's going to return a Boolean value. Should I go and, and take some action, should I move to this target state? So maybe you have this trigger that occurs, it's a timer or a delay, and you want to then run this condition and check something. You want to say, oh, well, the, the delay's expired. Should I move on to this state? Yes or no? Or maybe you received a message over WCF and the condition is going to check that message and decide if it's okay to follow this particular path and go to that target state. And the action then simply is an activity that's going to execute if the condition is true. So the trigger fires, the ev condition evaluates. If it's true, then the action is going to execute and you move to the target state. So that's the makeup. We've got states, we've got transitions, and these transitions are where much of the action happens with these triggers, conditions, and actions before moving to a target state. Here I want to show you an example where I don't use triggers. So my previous example was pretty challenging to guess. Surprisingly, I got it right a couple times trying to demo. But I want to give some indication of whether you're too low or too high. So you can see here from my guessing state, I have an entry and exit. And I have three transitions. The winner transition obviously goes to the final state. And then I have a low and a high. So let's go look at what we do in the entry state. I'm going to write out that I'm entering, and then I'm going to set up that target number. So if we haven't already figured out the random number, I want to set it up. And here I'm going to wait for data. So I'm deciding that as I enter the state, one of the things I'm going to do is collect some data from the user. I also have my exit indicator here. And so when I get to the transitions then, for low, for example, I have no trigger. What I have is a condition. So there's no trigger activity, which means all of my transitions are set up this way. There's no trigger. That means they're all potentially can run. So after entry is complete, it's going to go through and it's going to evaluate all the conditions. So if current guess is less than target number, I say too low, try again. And my destination then is the guessing state. So this is where I get into a self transition and that's going to cause me to leave this state and come back into it. Same thing with a high, no trigger, but it has a condition. 
So if the current guess is greater than the target number, I'll tell you it's too high and we'll go back to guessing. And then of course if we go to the winner, we just check if they are equivalent. So essentially what I'm doing here is a switch statement or a branching where all the activity happened in the entry, these things are going to run with no trigger and only a condition. So I want to point that out because it's a key design piece that you may want to use where you have a transition that doesn't need a trigger, doesn't have any activity that has to happen, it's just based on the condition. And if that condition is true, after you get through that entry, then it's going to do that. So let's run through this. So it's entering the guessing state. It wants me to enter my guess. Now it says it's too low. Try again. And notice it took my value. Before it said too low, try again, it was exiting the guessing state. So it exits the state, runs the exit action, then it goes through and runs my transition action. Now we enter again. I can see that I'm too high. Still too high. And then when I finally get it, we exit guessing. Then we go into the, the winner transition. That action runs. We see the output and we're done. So a couple of different patterns there that you can use. Those transitions with no trigger, completely based on the condition that are going to run after the entry occurs. So you may find that after you enter a state, Based on certain conditions, you're already ready to transition. You don't need any triggers to happen.